All right, so here are the colors that we started with. You're going to notice that the package is going to say to bake it for 30 minutes, but most people actually do an hour and it really makes a big difference. If you just do 30 minutes, you're going to get breakage. show you some things that I'm going to be doing here. Of course you can use any of the basic colors, a yellow, red, blue, black or white, but really it's up to you. You can use those, you can use the pastels, just enjoy and have fun. Now if you don't already have one of these tiles laying around at your house, I would suggest uh, just go to Lowe's or Home Depot and get one. You can get these for less than a dollar. I would say get one at least twice this size. You just need something that you can work on as a surface that you can just take right into the oven instead of making your cutouts and then moving them from one surface to another. This just makes a lot more sense that way they don't get bent or disformed or anything like that. I'll be using this really big surface right here just because it's easier for filming. All right, well, I'm going to start with the gray. Now you want to make sure you really warm up your clay. You knead it. You just, you know, keep it in your hands, move it around and just make sure that it's workable. Now when I roll my pasta, because I do this for a living, I use a pasta machine. But you don't need to do that. You're going to be using this rolling pin right here. Now you see these little circle things on the end of them. They're going to help you with the depth. So. Depending on which one of the two you choose, that's how thick it's going to be. I'm going to start with the one that's a little bit bigger. Now I just want to kind of have you follow what I'm doing. You're going to notice that I'll be speeding up some sections and then I'll go slow again. And just follow me and uh, you should be alright. You can, you know, stop at any point and go forward or backwards, whatever works best for you. Now I decided to make it a little bit thinner, so I'm taking one of these off, so the depth will be a little bit less. Yeah, so sometimes we can get some air bubbles that can be caused by maybe a temperature, maybe it's a little bit warm in the room that I'm working in. So I'm going to use this needle pin right here, which is also in the Ultimate Kit. And you just poke little holes right where the bubbles are and that really makes a big difference. You just go over it afterwards with the rolling pin again and yeah, that will really help. You definitely don't want to leave them because if you do, then you can get breakage. Now the ultimate kit is going to come with two different strength sandpaper, but this one that you see right here is one that I like to use for really nice texture and it's totally unnecessary, but if you would like to do that, maybe see if you have anything like that in your house or you can also get it for pretty cheap if you just need a little bit of it. But yeah, it really adds a lot of texture and it's very forgiving. Now you're going to have two options to keep the clay from sticking to the cutters. One of them is water and one of them is cornstarch. You can put your brush directly in the cornstarch and put it right on the clay or you can put your cutters in there and it'll really help with stickiness. Make sure you press every corner and then carefully pick up the cutter. Now that actually came out really good which means that the cutters are really sharp and that's exactly what you want. All right, the second one. All right, let's use the circle for the second part. Go. Of course you can do whatever you want, there's so many possibilities. Alright, so we got that. 
I'm gonna add a little stud right here. And while we're at it, I'm just gonna make a bunch of them because why not? Now let's take the X-Acto knife. You're gonna have that in your kit. Now you see how I'm going into the corner here. I'm gonna start lifting it up there. Now, if you were to get a little bit more serious about uh, working with polymer clay and earring making, you would get a tissue blade. And I use that instead of the X-Acto knife. Now you can take the needle pin and also go right in there. You see how I'm pulling out little details there. All right, I'm gonna be using the pasta machine to save time for this video, but you're gonna be using the rolling pin. All right, so here's our next piece. And here I'm adding some more texture again. Now you can take these circles off of here and we can just add little tiny different color designs. Let's make the clay super thin. And let's just make a few little cutouts. Yeah, you can just do random little designs here, like I'm doing, but whatever you want to do. Now I'm going to go over it really light with my rolling pin. And I'm going to add just a little bit of cornstarch on here because I don't want to pull off my little designs when I add the texture. You don't have to necessarily use the sanding paper, but with the sanding paper, it's really going to just make it look like it's part of the design. It's gonna look uh, kind of factory made, which is really cool. By the way, I'm using very, very light pressure with my rolling pin. You can also just do it with your hand, but you don't wanna make the slab any thinner than it already is because then the earrings will break. Now you see how it's part of the design. It's really cool. instead of wasting this clay I'm just gonna do kind of like a swirly marbly look we don't have that much color in it but we'll have a little bit so it'll be kind of cool The more I'm using these cutters, the more I feel like we don't really need to use the cornstarch or water really to dip it in. You'll see, I mean, you have to see how it works. You know, sometimes it depends on the temperature in the room as well. So another really cool thing we can do is just roll this right here and you can get a really neat design. Now at the end, when I show you the earrings that I've made, you'll be able to see a little bit closer what I've done. Next color, let me put this through the pasta machine for time's sake. Now I want to add a little bit of white, but I'm going to make it a little bit more of an off-white by adding just a very tiny touch 
of some of our colors that we've mixed. And another little bubble. Now another really fun thing we can do is put all kinds of different colors together. And let's just take the rest of these and watch what I'm going to do with them. Now usually I would put this in the pasta machine now, but I'll just show you how you're going to be doing it if you decide to do something like this. Now you're going to fold it up and try to make sure that you line up the stripes. I'm going to run this through the pasta machine now. Now I decided to split it up in the middle because it's just very narrow so I just wanted to get a little bit more out of it. Now obviously you don't have to do what I'm going to do next but you might really like it. take our white piece now I think you're probably starting to get the idea of what I'm doing here now you have to really make sure that you push the two separate pieces together tight enough so that they don't separate after baking Let's take the rest of the clay and just put it all together. I guess that's pretty much it uh, you know you can do so many more things um, just be creative all right I actually decided to take this huge piece of tile and put it in the oven <laughs> all right so let's look at these before we put them in the oven look how pretty they came out Now make sure that you set your oven to 275 degrees and put it for 60 minutes, one hour. Now go ahead and grab some aluminum foil and put it over it and make a tent. I'm using just one hand so I can film so it's a little awkward but just make sure that uh, it's kind of like a tent. There's some space in between it but you want to cover it because it'll really help you uh, to keep them from getting burnt uh, or discolored. Alright, here's an hour later. Now they're really hot so you got to be careful but you'll notice that they're really rubbery when you first take them out. Once they cool down that's going to change, they're going to harden a lot. Alright now that they're cooled down let's take these off of here. Now you notice now they have still a little bit of flexibility but they're a lot more firm now.
right, here we go. Look at all these beautiful pieces we have now. Now some people like to take some alcohol and try to clean some of the edges off. If there's a lot of cleaning that needs to be done, you definitely need to use your, your sanding squares. But you can do both, you can alternate depending on how much you're getting off. It also depends on the clay that you're using. Some clays are a little bit harder than others. All right, so you're gonna take your little sanding square and you're gonna start working it. Now I like to fold it up because it'll fit better in your hand. Now you need to start with the rough sanding paper and then afterwards when you smooth out what you've done, you'll use the softer one. So that's our first one. I'll show you one that has a little bit tighter edges. For instance, if you have something like this, you really need to get in there in every corner. If you're having a hard time getting into the edges, then go ahead and use your X-Acto knife and you can really get in there. Just be really careful because you don't want to ruin your earrings. Now you're going to see me using my drill now to finish these because I don't want to bore you through the video and uh, you know, this will speed up things a little bit here. So just continue doing this by hand while I use my drill. <laughs> In your ultimate kit, you'll see that you'll have different sizes, attachments, drill bits for your little hand drill. And for this, what we're doing right now, you don't want to use the really small ones. You want to use something that's kind of in the middle. You'll notice that there are three of them that are a little bit bigger. And the one that's in the middle, I would say, would be the best for this project. Now you're going to open this up a little bit. You're going to hold it right here. Then you're going to open it up a little bit. Now you put the drill bit right in there. You're going to make sure it's open the right size. You can always make it a little bit tighter or open it up a little bit more. Now you can kind of see how much I'm leaving out. Don't put it in too deep. Don't leave it too far because you don't want it to break. Kind of like what I'm doing right here. All right, and then make sure that you tighten it really good. All right, let's get started. Now if you wanted to, you can put a little mark on it like I'm doing right here. It doesn't really matter what you're using for that. It's just to make sure everything is even. You just want to make sure that your holes where the jump rings go are even enough. This is something that you can do if you want to, but it's not a must. Now make sure you put something underneath it, like I have just an old piece of wood. You don't want to crack the tile that you're working on. Now you'll put the drill bit right into the little mark that you just created. You're going to push just a little bit just to get a good hold of it. And you'll start putting a little bit of pressure on it and you'll see where I have my hand right now. And you'll have your hand right there on top like this and press lightly and at the same time that you're holding it down with this part right here, you're going to turn it. To the right. Let me pick it up and show you from the side so you can see it better. Now you see how I'm holding it right here and also in the front and now you'll start turning. I'll put it back on a piece of wood because I don't want to make it crooked and honestly this is not that difficult. You'll figure it out after a few times. Just make sure you go all the way through and voila, there's your hole. If you purchase the full kit, you're going to have a lot of findings here, which means you have a lot of options. Let's start with the gold jump rings. Now you'll have one of these pliers in your kit as well. It'll feel a little awkward at first when you start using it, but you'll get used to it real quick. And just try to hold it the way that I am. Now when you open your jump rings, this is really important. Now it's very important that you don't pull them apart outwardly like this. Instead, what you're gonna do, take your jump ring, 
find where the little opening is. You'll see it because there's going to be a, a line right up here. Take your pliers. Now, if you have another set of pliers, you can use that for your left hand, but really these are thin enough jump rings to just do it with your hand. Now, only go backwards or forward, but never go to the right. So now it's separated. You're going to put it right into the hole of the earring piece, and then also put that same jump ring into the other piece. And again, when you close the jump ring, make sure that you're not going outward. Just make sure you're going forward or backward. If you don't do it this way, then you're going to end up with a jump ring that'll probably come off. And this way it'll make it really tight. Now, if we're doing it correctly, then it's on there tight. It's not going anywhere. It looks great and you're all done. Okay, I want to put a stud back on this one. And I'm going to share two different ways to do it. One of them is with glue. So here's the glue. You have this in your kit as well. You'll have to cut a little bit of the tip off of it. Let's put just a little dab carefully. Don't get your finger stuck to this. And I would wait just a few seconds to let it dry a tiny bit. And then take one of the little stud bags in whatever color you want, silver or gold, and place it on there gently. And I feel like it's preference. You can put it a little further to the outside or you can put it right in the middle, depending on the size of the stud or how you want it to sit. Now, because I do this for a living, I usually let this dry really well. And then I put a little bit of resin on it and then put it under the UV light because it holds up really, really well. And since I'm selling it, I got to make sure that happens. But that's obviously not what you're doing today. Now the glue will hold up for a little while, but it's not going to be as sturdy as putting resin on it or what I'm going to show you next. And this is going to be a little bit more difficult, but it's definitely doable. You'll need a really thin layer of clay for this. And also you have to bake this again once you're done with this part for about a half hour. You see how thin I made this? Now take your needle pin and poke a little hole right where the point will be. Then take your little piece of clay and poke it right through with the stud back. And then you're going to grab it and you'll start working it in. And again, when you're done with that, this has to go back in the oven, I would say about 30 minutes and just cover it up with your aluminum foil. And you can always grab your needle pin just to try and work it in a little bit better. And then you can clean it up a little bit with your X-Acto knife. This is pretty much what it's going to look like. Obviously, you'll have to sand it a little bit and smooth it out, but it's going to look pretty professional, actually. If you really want these to hold up, that's definitely what I would do. And please don't ever put glue on a stud back and then put clay over it and put it back in the oven. You can't do that. It's a chemical reaction. It's not good for you. While these studs dry, I'm just going to put hooks into this pair. In all this, we've already learned how to drill the holes, how to open the jump rings, how to put the jump rings into the holes and connect everything. The way that the hook is pointed right now will make the earring look sideways. You want it to face to the front, so you're going to have to take your pliers and kind of move it forward a little bit. Grab them the way that you see me doing it right now, and then you bend that part back, but you hold the pliers tight. Now we're going to take the hook and we'll put it right into the open jump ring. You see that? And now that it's on there, let's close it. Remember when you use the pliers to open and close jump rings, don't go outward, go forward. Otherwise, the hook will definitely fall off. Here we 
we go. All done. I always add the rubber backs on my earrings, whether it's a hook or a stud back. This way my customers don't lose their earrings. First pair done. Stud bags are definitely dry by now. Let's start working on the next pair. white ones we could either do gray or how about these longer pieces right here Just remember, you don't have to do anything that I'm doing. You can use you know, gold or silver findings and also, you know, the clay piece that you made. You could have used red or black or blue, you know, or mix your own colors. Really, it's up to you. You can be the artist. I'm just going to be using my drill so I can speed things up a little bit for you. really hope you had an amazing time creating your art pieces you know maybe with your family maybe with your best friends for a birthday party I don't know but if you have any questions please just message me whether it's here on YouTube or even in my Etsy shop I'm happy to help and I hope you have an amazing day bless you